this opportunity to come into your presence and to bring your word to your people. Speak to this vessel of clay. Lord, give your people ears to hear what the Spirit would say to each one of us. And Father, let everything that's done is be decent and in order and let you be glorified in it all. Let the fruit that brings joy to you and glory to you be manifested from the preaching of this word, the teaching of this word. We thank you that everybody here will receive exactly what they need from you and that they will not stumble over anything that's distracting around them. And we just give you all the praise, glory, and honor for what you've already proposed to do in Jesus' name. Today, saints, you never know how long a series is going to go. So you just start and the Holy Spirit, he keeps unpeeling layers like an onion until you get to the finish of it. And so today is part three of ambassadors of, of heaven. Ambassadors, heaven's ambassadors, ambassadors of heaven. And this word is, <clears throat> this word is coming alive to me. It's coming alive, man. It's like, uh, this is the real deal. It's the end time word. It's the end time word. And this morning when I was getting dressed, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to know that this message is a message of increase. It's a message of increase. That means that if you get this and you put this into your arsenal as a believer, that the byproduct, the results of this message is going to cause increase to come to you from God in every area of your life. Amen? Every area of your life. You increase in health, increase in wealth, increase in peace, increase in all the substance that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus. This message is, is, is the foundational for that. So it's not just a message for you to sit and try to listen to and hurry for it to finish. It's a message of increase. God's trying to set you up, amen, to be a blessing in this hour that we're living in. This is it, man. This is this. An ambassador of God is somebody that God really sponsors. You spon he sponsors you because you, you represent him. You represent him. And what you do and what you say as an ambassador is as if God himself is doing it and saying it. And so if he can get us positioned properly to allow this stuff to flow in us and through us, you find, man, you find your life changed like you never knew before. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 21, let's we'll start here today. Scripture says, therefore from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore or we beg you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Saints, that was powerful words from God. Amen. It, 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 it requires a shift of the way we think as carnal people, normal people. I mean, it's telling us to do some stuff that most Christians don't even think about doing. Because it just doesn't make sense to them. Stop looking at things after the flesh. It starts out. Don't look at things after the flesh. Regard no one after the flesh. That's why so many churches are segregated on Sunday morning because people look at the flesh. The flesh don't look like something I want to be around. Amen. People do things based on the color of a person or the gender of a person. God, regard no one. Say, don't even look at Christ that way any longer. Amen. We don't look at Christ's picture that they have portrayed him to look like. We look at the word of God now. That's what the Bible is saying. We look at the word of God. The word of God is what is representative of Jesus Christ and God right now. Amen. It talks about how we have changed, how we've changed. We've changed from our natural earth identity 
and has become, by virtue of our connection with God in Christ Jesus, what the Bible calls new creations. Never before experienced, never before seen creatures walking this earth, amen? Walking in human flesh, talking and living in human flesh, but carrying the power of heaven, the personage of God inside of us in this earth, a new creation. Saints, amen, that's powerful, man. And when you know this, and you, you, you know this even outside the four walls of the church, it changes everything for everybody, amen? And he has given us a ministry, every person. Not just a person sitting behind the pulpit, but he has given every person who has received Christ Jesus. We're church to preach Christ, amen? amen? Anybody don't want Christ, they don't want to be up in here because we preach Christ and him crucified. Amen? amen? Every time, all the time. We lift him as high as we can, as high as we can. And he has given us a ministry and ambassadorship to represent the kingdom of God or the country that we were born into, that we represent, which represent the country that we're born into. I know we, most of us are Americans, American citizens, I believe, but we have another country. When you get saved, your citizenship is of, in heaven. Amen? Amen? We've already covered this. It's kind of a, a, a you know, rehearsal, a review. Ambassador, I got this from my notes in the Bible that I was reading. It said, ambassadors from the Greek word translated, we are ambassadors. I'm not going to say the Greek word because we don't want to study Greek today. It's a verb meaning to travel or work as an official representative. It comes from a word which means to be older or eldest or to occupy first place, which is where we get our English word elder. Ambassadors are more than messengers. They represent another and they speak with authority equal to that person who sent them. God's ministry of reconciliation, therefore, is declared through those who have been reconciled. God speaks through the mouth of his ambassadors. The focus is upon the authority of the message and not the messenger. As one speaks on behalf of Christ as his ambassador, he is at the same time present and speaking through that individual. That's powerful. Amen. An ambassador is a powerful person, saints. It's not just a regular old person that says, I pray the sinner's prayer and I go to church every now and then and give my two cents. It's a person who really walks and talks and lives as a representative of God everywhere. Amen. So then when I read and I started thinking, ambassador is a designation of spiritual maturity because it, it's, it's connected to that word elder, uh, older. Most people don't want to be old. That's why I asked the lady with her, where her birthday is because I know she's only 25. Amen. Praise the Lord. Most people don't want to be old. No, church will have no old folks. Say that The elder women are supposed to teach the young women and the elder women around teach no younger women. Amen. They're all elder. All of them younger. So somebody got to be growing up and riding this place. Amen. Well, Sister Domino, you, you elder, amen. Praise God. <laughs> so it's a designation of maturity. And that's why last week, I, don't know if I sensed it, man. I sensed it so strong. It, it, it's a, Christians who are not seeing themselves as mature, they, they get disinterested and they get bored when this truth is shared. And they see themselves not after what God is saying about them. They only see themselves according to their flesh identity. And so when they hear this word, this awesome word, what God has, has, has put this inside of us, and he has elevated us to this lofty level, and they, they see themselves as being who they were before they got saved, who they were when they grew up and everybody picked on them who they were according to their flesh, and they can't really embrace this identity that God has placed on us. So, so I talk, I, we talked about a couple weeks, uh, about a month ago, we talked about this imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is a syndrome where, where you got everything going on for you, man. You, you live in large and well, successful in everything, and people look at you like you got it all going on. Because you do have it all going on, but inside, you see yourself as a failure unqualified 
to do anything that God's called you to do or that you are qualified to do. And so we're trying to cast this imposter syndrome out of here, amen? And if you don't have the word, then that's who you're going to be. The word is the only thing that can transform your image from the inside and make you look like what God wants you to look like if you, you know, praise God. In Hebrews 5, verse 12, 14, it says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only in milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This message is for the times that we're living in. We're living in the end times. Anybody whether you're Christian or not, go look at TV for five minutes. Look at the news. Look at what's happening in the world. And you will see, man, something has, has changed. Things are not going too well around this world, in these communities, in these countries. Amen? Saints, we're living in the last days. God said this message is to fortify and to build up my people to be able to stand victoriously in the midst of all the chaos, no matter what may come. Amen? Amen? They will stand and represent God in this moment in time. Amen. This is not a baby message. This is the message that babies need to eat on. They may have to chew on it more and more and over and over again until they can swallow it. But this is a message that, will, that, 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 that God say we should be ready to receive. Amen? Amen. We should be ready to receive. We, we, we didn't get just, just get saved this morning, did we? I mean, some people might, but we did. We've been walking with God for a few minutes long enough for this part of the word of God to be digestible to us. Amen? So we're going to give some more solid food this morning. Can I give some solid food this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Think about this as going to a smorgasbord and we took away all the ice cream and cake and all of the sweet stuff and we just threw out some steaks and collard greens. Amen. Amen. Okra and whatever else. It's broccoli and stuff that's good for you. And see, and see, sister, sister shuddered when I said broccoli. <laughs> but this is solid food, man. This is kind of stuff that got nutrition that'll build you up. Amen. In Colossians chapter one, verse 13 to 14, it says that Jesus has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has already delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. And so this place that we represent, this country that we're supposed to represent, is not a place that we're going to go to when we die and transition. When you get saved, when you give your life to Jesus, that transaction happens right then. Amen? Amen? Amen. You get delivered from the world system, from this earthly dominion, the authority of the earth. It, it, it happens, whether you know it or not. You have to renew your mind to understand this. But in God's mind, this has happened. I have snatched you out of the devil's domain. And I have placed you in the kingdom of my son. Amen? This is where we are. So God said, now we need to learn about how to operate from that position of authority and power. Amen? Saints, we are ambassadors of heaven. We're supposed to be. We are not politicians. None of us are politicians. God don't send out politicians to politic about heaven. Amen? Amen. If an ambassador of heaven, a Christian, is involved in a personal business, which is good. You should be in business if, you get, if that's your calling. Your business will be enhanced more by putting God's business first over your personal business. Amen. Put God first over your personal business. Amen? But you shouldn't, speaking about integrity of an ambassador, you shouldn't be influenced, use the influence of your heavenly appointment to try to gain favor for the enhancement of your personal business like so many Christians do. You'd be surprised, Christians go into churches and they look around, mm, I, might, I might be a candidate for my business, maybe I can sell them something, uh, you know. You know how Christians are, that's carnal. You know, they, they, got, they got money, man, maybe I can, Ambassadors don't take advantage of people that way, amen? They don't use their heavenly appointment to gain favor for the enhancements of their personal business 
This demonstrates an act, a, a lack of integrity, lack of integrity. Some people, man, they, they don't want to talk to you and want to take you to lunch until they, they find out that you, you, that you may be a candidate for what they're selling. And then all of a sudden they want to invite you to dinner, take you to lunch. And that's a lack of integrity, man. Amen. Your personal business, I don't know what, who is this for, is enhanced by and when it's centered on the word of God. The word of God is what we focus on. Amen. When you focus on the word of God, you are focusing on God. In John, St. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Amen. God and his word is one. The word can change everything and anything the same way God can change everything and anything. The word will change circumstances. Adverse circumstances can't stand up to the word of God when believed. Amen? Amen. People can't stand up and defend themselves when the word of God is presented to them, including us. When we submit ourselves to the word of God and allow the word of God to take root in our hearts, that word will change us. It will change you from what you used to be into what God has said that you are. Amen? But you have to believe this word. The power of the word of God is released when we decide, make a choice to believe it. And when people don't believe the word of God, no matter how powerful God is, how potent he is, the Bible says that we limit him. Nobody wants to limit God. Amen? In Psalm 78, verse 40 to 43, for instance, it says, How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the fields of Zorn. Saints, the equipping of the ambassador for this hour is... It's an ongoing process, even though if you're a quick study, it can happen to you instantly. Amen? Amen? But it requires an adjustment in our mindsets. It requires an adjustment in mind, no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been in church, whether you just came first time today or whether you've been here for 30 years. It requires an adjustment in the way we think. And God's always taking us from glory to glory, faith to faith. And so there's always room to elevate, to learn. You never arrived. Some people think that they know it all because they've been around longer or whatever. But the key to growth, saints, is always be teachable. Always realize that compared to God, you don't know nothing. Amen. Amen? And that's how you keep receiving revelation. That's how you keep receiving blessings by remaining teachable, being like a little child. No matter how much he teach you, how much he show you, you don't know it all yet. You just know what you know. Amen? Amen. And so, saints... Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 from the Amplified Bible. I'm going to read it this way. Amplified, man. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. And do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adopted to external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewing of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Amen? So God says that we have a job to get into this word and allow that word to change the way we think. Because, you see, when God saves you, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, all this truth is deposited inside of you. But your mind is still lagging on what you used to be and what you know. And so the transformation of your mind will get your mind in sync with what God has placed inside of you. And you do that by adhering to the word of God and, and allowing the word to work in your life. Amen? Amen. There are some adjustments that we're going to touch on as we, as we wind this, this part of the message down. And it'll help us 
in achieving this objective of being suitable ambassadors for Christ, if that's what you want to do. It'll, it'll help you, man. It'll help you in, in every situation, circumstance, without you even realizing it, without you wanting to do it. It'll help you be an ambassador to Christ. Amen? And some of these things in, include submitting to the Word of God, teaching to, submitting to the teaching of the Word of God, submitting to the teaching of the Word of God. Don't take the Word of God that's taught to you for granted. Make a decision of your will that you're going to Believe the word of God that's taught and you're going to search it out to make sure it's scriptural and you're going to submit to the word of God. Amen. Why should you submit to the word of God in a church? So many Christians say I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. I run across people all the time. I'm a Christian. I don't go to church. I believe you, you, you can't tell me what to do. Anybody ran across anybody that way? I mean, that's all the time. But, but there's, there's, there's a reason why God wants you in the church. Because in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, he placed gifts in the church just for you. He said he gave himself some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth and love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head even Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working of which every part does its share causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. God say I want you to come into this house so that I can build in you and pull out of you gifts and talents that I only know about. Amen? And those gifts and talents are never going to be actualized outside of my church. You got to come into my house so that I can pull those things that I place inside of you out. And not only will you be a blessing to edifying the body of Christ, but you will be a blessing in your life everywhere you go because you have submitted to the teaching of the word and the structure that God has placed in the church. So the church is not just a place to come and listen, look, look and listen and, and, and split. It's a place to come and receive the word of God and let the word of God begin to work in you and, and get involved in what God is doing. Amen. That's that so many people, especially some people of certain color, don't want to join anything that's going to require building. If I got to come in and join the praise team or the ushers or the children's church and help build, I'm going to a place that's already got it in place. So I can come and sit down and go home and do my own thing. But God is, is calling builders, saying, people who say, God, use me. I, I mean, I've, I've had the reins of my life for all these 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and I, and I know there's got to be more. And I'm going to submit to your word, to your authority, and I'm going to trust you. for the. Uh, uh, I give you at least six months, God. I mean, I've given myself and the devil all these 50 years. I'm going to give you six months. And you're like, man, God will change everything for you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, number two is we need to study the word. We need to study the word. Study to show yourself approving to God or workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? Study, studying the word, saints, should begin with the message notes that you receive on Sunday morning by your man and woman of God. A woman of God. Whatever revelation God gives you, you should take notes. That should be the starting point of your study during the week. I know people like to study all kind of stuff. Folks come in here all the time. Pastor, I heard this preacher preaching about this. I heard this people. Okay, that's okay for him feeding his sheep. But did God place you in that house? God says he places members in the body as it pleases him. He places members in the body that's going to feed you according to what he wants you to eat. So if you're going around like a goat eating hubcaps, and cans, and then you come in on Sunday morning choking on what God's going to feed you. You need to start your study with what God has given you on Sundays, amen? In the church that he's placed you in, 
or else you need to go find the church that God placed you in. You might have to fly to some other city to get to it because most people don't want to come to their local expression. Amen. Start studying with the word that God gives you. Number three, we need to meditate on the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Amen. Meditation is the missing link to revelation and power that Christians need. Meditation. Not the um, meditation, but looking at the word of God that you're studying and put it in your mouth and keep it in your heart and thinking about it and going to sleep thinking about it. And before you know it, the word of God, which is God, begins to unravel and, un, uh, and, and, and give you strategies and ideas and give you visions of things that, that you never would have thought of before. Joshua 1.8 was a word that Joshua received from God so that he could be a successful leader in leading God's people into the promised land. He said, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So the same word to Joshua is a word to us. We need to meditate on the word of God. Amen? Yeah. Proverbs 4, 20, 22 says, My son, give attention to my word, incline your ear to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Saints, we need to meditate on the Word of God every week. Meditate on the Word of God. You want to know why you have such a hard time coming and doing the things that God wants you to do in, in, a, in an excellent way? It's because the missing link of meditation. The missing link of meditation. Meditation will help you transform your seeing where you begin to see yourself the way God sees you and not the way you see you. I was telling the brothers that I, I play golf sometimes. Everybody know I play golf sometimes, amen? I mean, I don't play all the time. But I play sometime. I got a trophy in there to prove it, but praise God. This is not, this got nothing to do with that. I play golf on Saturdays with, with a group of guys that I just happened to hook up with because of a ministry call. They're not saved. It was a contractor that worked in my house. And I decided to go play with them on Saturdays. So Saturdays, some Saturdays, I go play at this high-end golf course with these guys. And they're not saved, man. They're just not saved. And, and, and I knew it was an assignment from God. As an ambassador, you, you accept assignments that's not pleasant. Some people want, don't want to do anything that's not pleasant. But I accept it because on Saturdays, I can kick back and relax and get ready for Sundays. But Saturday morning, I decided to go this time and go out there and I couldn't get out of it. Couldn't get out of it. But these guys began to talk on, on the tent hole. They began to talk among themselves about the political situation in the world, in the country. And I'm trying to get stay out of that because I really don't want to be there. I'm trying to hurry up and get through so I can go home and rest and stuff, getting hot. And they're talking about stuff that's that's vexing my spirit, man. They're talking about, you know, I don't care who wins what election. All I know is what I believe. I know that if somebody said they're gonna castrate a boy to make him a little girl and he's seven years old. That's something wrong with that picture. That's something wrong with that picture, man. If somebody want to kill a baby, I mean, because they haven't been born yet, that's, that's, that's God say, don't shit no answer. That's something wrong with that. So I'm listening to this. And so I get into the discussion and, and to make a long story short, I, I tell them, I, I can't go with that. Man. I can't go with none of that stuff. Man, I believe the Bible. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I, don't, I, I believe the word of God. And, 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 and I've been playing with these guys long enough to know that they don't believe the Bible. They told me they don't believe the Bible. They ain't going to say, well, the Bible says. I say, you don't tell me what the Bible say. You don't believe the Bible. Amen? I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking, I'm the ambassador around here. You are the one representing the other kingdom. And I, I look at myself like, man, I, I sound like I'm God. Talking to these guys out on this golf course like that. But they shut up, man. They listen, man. They pay attention. Sometimes you got to be bold. Sometimes you can't hold your tongue, amen? They might not invite me back again, but I don't care. I can go somewhere else and play if I want to, amen? But when you ambassador thinks, sometimes God will put you in a situation that's not comfortable. You have to say stuff, man, to represent the kingdom of God. You're not representing yourself. You represent another kingdom, amen? 
When people do things and say things and that happen in your presence, if you're an ambassador, you're going to say, God said this. You don't have to say it that way, but whatever you say should be what God says. And when you speak as an ambassador, it's as if God himself is speaking. It's, it's, that's what the Bible says. And so they might not like you, but they will have to respond to that word. They have to answer that word, saints. Amen. Amen. Number four. We're almost finished. We need to pray the word. Pray the word. Luke 18, 1 says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart or not faint. Amen? Or not give up. People that faint, that lose heart, that give up. A lot of people giving up these days are people who are not praying the word of God. If you're praying the word of God, you won't quit. They won't quit. So many people wanted me to quit so many times. All the stuff that I had to deal with. They said, man, won't you quit? If it was left up to me, I would have quit a long time ago. But there's one who lives inside of me. Amen. The Bible says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. The one inside of me don't know what quit is. Can't spell it. No. That one thing God can't do is can't spell quit. <laughs> You can't quit. You got to keep going. You keep getting up. You keep coming. I said, people say, whoa, 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 whoa. Pastor, I got, I pastor don't like, he don't like for us coming in late. He don't like for doing it. I mean, you do what you want to do. This is where I roll from, amen? Yeah. You should receive the word and you'll roll from there too. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. First John 5, 14, 15 says, now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Saying so that's the reason to pray right there, the word of God. God said, if you, if you pray anything according to his word, his word, this is God, almighty God, you pray, his children, pray anything according to his word, that he's going to hear you. And you know if he hear you, that you can begin to rejoice and thank God that you've already received it. Because it's manifesting. Amen? There's nothing too hard for God, saints. Amen? You find it in the word. You find it in God's will. And you pray it in faith. And God says, it's yours. Amen? I don't care what happened to sister so-and-so and so, or brother so-and-so and so, or your grandma, or everybody else that you know. God says, if you pray according to his will, amen, that he hears you. Amen? And then number, number five, the final one, the hard one, is fellowship. Fellowship around the word of God means fellowshipping with God's people as well. Amen? You're spending time with the word of God. Fellowship is this Greek word koinonia. It means partnership, participation, social intercourse, or benefaction. It means to communicate. It means communion, distribution, association, community, joint participation. Fellowship means that we spend time together, that we talk to each other, that we find out what I can do to help your life within my power. Amen. Amen? It's not an island. When I was in high school, we sang a song that I still remember. We were singing those Negro spirituals back in the day when I went to school. And this one was, no man is an island. So many Christians want to be an island. They want to be all by myself, leave me alone, and I'll be okay. Lock me up in a convent, a monastery, and I'll be okay. No, God said, no, this time to represent him in the face of all the negativity and all the haters. It's time to come out. It's time to come out, saints. It's time to step up. God said, when you step up, everything you need, Everything that you need as an ambassador, just like an ambassador of the United States of America going to some foreign hostile country is in need of provision. The United States of America in all its might is going to get that stuff to him or her immediately. An ambassador from heaven is no less supplied. Amen. God said, when you make up your mind to step up and to serve God in this way. The resources of heaven are more extensive than what the United States can give you. The United States can't give you healing. The United States can't give you victory over every situation and every circumstance that the doctors can't even diagnose. 
But God can, amen? The United States can't bring your love, the love of your life into your life when you believe in God. You pretend you ain't believing. I ain't want nobody to get married to. Yes, you do. And God knows it, amen? You become an ambassador for God. And next thing you know, coming into your life is the very one that God has prepared for you to come into your life. Amen? So fellowship in saints around the word of God and with the people of God is critical. Acts 2.42 says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And Hebrews 10.25 says, not forsaking the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. The day approaching is coming soon. We know Jesus is coming back, but if he doesn't come back, you're going to have a crisis in your life where you're going to need him to deal with. Amen? Yeah. You, need, you need him to deal with. You got some stuff that you can't fix. You got stuff the doctors can't fix, and you can't even figure out why they can't fix it. You think, you think just because you turn 70, you got to be crippled. You got to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen? Amen. God said, no. Amen. Uh-uh. That's a resource that you can, you can requisition from me. Amen? Amen? Don't forsake the assembly of yourself together in this hour. It's important to make sure that you gather around other Christians. If you major in these areas, saints, you will be a good ambassador and heaven will bless you no matter what your profession is while you're on this earth. Amen? Now I have to close, but I have to say this. I didn't decide to preach this message out of my own mind. This came from the Holy Spirit and God wants you to know that he chose you. If you're here today, God chose you. And I don't have to worry about you believing it because God will confirm his word with signs following. God chose you, amen? And if God chose you, he equips. He equips everyone he chooses. Everyone he chooses, he equips you supernaturally with whatever you need to be successful in that thing, amen? John 15, verse 16, 17 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should, should, should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. So God said, on top of all that you've learned, remember to love one another. And just like Jesus called the 12 disciples with him, God has called you and I. He's chosen us. And just like Jesus gave them power from Mark 3.15 to heal sickness and to cast out demons, God say, I have given you power to do the same thing and much more. Because what they received was before the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Ghost has come. Jesus has ascended, passed the baton. The Holy Spirit is here now. He's in us. And the greater works are ready to be released in the ambassadors. Amen? Amen? A new covenant ambassador from heaven is fully equipped by the Holy Ghost to do fully everything that Jesus did and even greater because he has gone to the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you don't believe it, look at Peter. <clears throat> look at Peter before the Holy Ghost. Peter was walking with Jesus. Jesus got arrested. Peter denied him three times. I don't know that dude. And the Bible says he even cussed. We don't cuss in church, but you know, he's, you know, he blankety blank blank. Get out of here. I don't know that blankety blank blank. This is Peter. After the Holy Ghost came, Peter was one who was filled with the Holy Spirit. The first time he opened his mouth, 5,000 people got saved. Everywhere he went, he healed and delivered people just like Jesus did. The Bible says even the shadow of Peter crossing people's path would heal them because he was now an ambassador from heaven, empowered by the Holy Ghost who has been given to us. Saints, this hour that we're living in is no joke. Amen? It's time to take the word of God serious and stop worrying so much about our own agenda, about our own selfishness. I've come to the conclusion, praise the Lord, Brother Al, good to see you this morning, that I might not even get married again. I came to the conclusion because 
I think I might be too far out for somebody else to come walking with me, yoke to yoke. I might be too far out there, man. I, I believe this word, man. I believe this word. I ain't got time to be, be dealing with somebody who, 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 who's operating in a third dimension. And, and, and trying to do things selfishly because they, you know what I mean? People selfish and stuff. This is about God, man. It's time for God right now. Amen. Amen. It's time to serve God. It's time to seek God. It's time to glorify God. Amen. Amen. It's, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what God is trying. To, like I said last week, if one person gets it, if one person gets it, that's all it takes. It, everybody will have to get it. Where two agree is touching anything on earth, it shall be done of our Father which is in heaven. Amen? So, saints, that's it for the day. Thank God for his word. Amen?